Welcome back everyone to the life of Leo Valdez part 2. At the end of part 1, we covered everything up to the moment when Leo, Piper, and Jason returned from their quest. In this video, we're going to cover the rest of Leo's story during the Heroes of Olympus series, so spoilers ahead. While Percy, Frank, and Hazel went on their own quest in the Son of Neptune, battling and defeating more giants, Leo spent his days building the Argo II, a giant warship that's meant to take the Seven to Greece to stop Gaia from awakening. Camp Hafla now knows that they must reunite with the Roman demigods if they're going to stand a chance against Gaia. After many months of hard work, Leo finally finishes up the Argo II and heads to Camp Jupiter with Piper, Jason, Annabeth, and Hedge. The Roman demigods were expecting them and gave them a chance to land and talk despite their violent history. Unfortunately, Leo is possessed by a spirit and is forced to use the Argo II's weapons to attack Camp Jupiter, losing the Romans' trust and bringing the two camps to the brink of war. Luckily, the Seven manage to escape and continue their quest, although Leo still blames himself for everything that happened. During their journey, they find out that Nico has been kidnapped by giants and only has a week left to live. While the Seven rush to find Nico, Annabeth also keeps spotting the Mark of Athena. She follows the Mark, trying to find the Athena Parthenos, which is the only hope to avoid war between the two demigod camps. While the rest of the Seven fight two more giants and manage to save Nico, as well as the entire city of Rome, Annabeth is busy confronting Arachne, who is guarding the Athena Parthenos. The rest of the Seven, after finishing their battles, find Annabeth underground, already having tricked Arachne into weaving her own trap. Leo blasts the ground above Annabeth, unknowingly sending Arachne through a crack back in the floor which leads straight to Tartarus. Leo, Jason, Piper, and Frank hurry to secure the Athena Parthenos, while Percy, Nico, and Hazel meet Annabeth. Nico informs the group that he figured out that one side of the Doors of Death is in Tartarus, while the other is in Greece, and both sides of the doors must be closed or else the monsters they kill will never truly die. Suddenly, Annabeth is swept off her feet and dragged toward the crack in the floor. Percy lunges, managing to grab hold of her and the two are left dangling above Tartarus. Nico tries to save them, but he's unable to reach. Percy tells the group to go to Epirus and secure the mortal side of the Doors of Death. Then he lets go, letting himself and Annabeth plummet into Tartarus. Leo once again blames himself for what happened to Percy and Annabeth, saying he should have been more aware and careful, but Nico assures him they are still alive. While the remaining members of the Seven and Nico head to Epirus, Leo is swept off the Argo II by his old enemy Kion. He's blasted to Calypso's Island, but I won't go too much into detail about that because I already made a video about everything that happens there. While Percy and Annabeth trek through Tartarus, the others manage to defeat the giant Clytius and secure the mortal side at the Doors of Death. Percy and Annabeth also manage to secure their side of the Doors of Death, with the help of the Titan Bob and the giant Demason. They reunite with the group, as well as Leo, Reyna, and Nico. They all agree that Nico, Reyna, and Hedge will take the Athena Parthenos back to Camp Hafla to avoid the war between the Roman and Greek demigods, while the Seven will head to the Parthenon to fight the giants and stop Gaia from awakening. Along the Seven's journey, the goddess Nike tells them that one of the Seven will die and that they need the physician's cure to save them. Leo also spends days working in the Hall of the Argo II on a secret project that he doesn't tell anyone else about. The Seven eventually get to the Parthenon and face all of the giants, defeating them with the help of the gods. Unfortunately, Percy got a bloody nose, and his blood fell onto the ground, officially awakening Gaia. The Seven rush over to Camp Hafla to defeat Gaia, convincing the gods to throw them all the way to Long Island. When they arrive, Leo tells everyone to get off the ship, assuring them he had a plan. Leo turns the Argo II back into Festus, which was the secret project he had been working on. Festus grabs Gaia, flying her high into the sky, away from her domain. Jason picks up Piper and flies after Leo, hoping to assist him. When Leo yells at them to leave, they resist, since Piper had been the one elected to carry the physician's cure, and wants to stay near Leo in case anything happened to him. Piper helps fight Gaia, charm speaking her to sleep, before Leo looks at them and tells them, I love you guys. Festus drops Piper and Jason, and they fall back to Earth, shouting Leo's name. Leo and Festus become a ball of fire in the clouds, their explosion tinting the sky gold. After the fighting ended, the demigods search for both Leo and Festus, unable to find any sign of them. The Seven and the rest of the camps, thinking Leo died, honored his memory, both Nico and Hazel blaming themselves for his death. Leo woke with a start after Festus gave him the cure, revealing that Leo actually gave Piper a fake version of the physician's cure and programmed Festus to give him the real cure after he died. It turned out Leo really did have a plan and that he hoped to sacrifice himself to destroy Gaia, only to be brought back by Festus using the physician's cure. As Leo rubbed his head, muttering that dying hurts, Festus flew them to Calypso's island, fulfilling Leo's oath to the river Styx that he would rescue Calypso. And that's it, everyone. Well, not for Leo's story, just for this video. 
Leo's story continues into the trials of Apollo, so if you want to see a part 3, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.